We've already taken a look at a couple of the 18 volt batteries for the cheap Chinese cordless power tools from eBay. But I thought it'd be interesting taking a look at a 12 one, 12 volt one, and it's roughly the same size. And it's odd because the listing had three options. You could get a 12 volt drill, an 18 volt drill, or a 21 volt drill. And the odd thing is, like, the 18 volt and the 21 volt are the same thing. They often mark the 18 volt batteries as 21 volts. 18 volts is the typical mid voltage, and 21 volts is roughly fully charged. But in this case, uh, I decided to get the 12 volt one to see how it differed, thinking it might actually just be an 18 volt battery they sent out. But it's not, it is notably lighter. So we'll open it up. It's also got stickers all over it tear invalid and then it's got stickers covering the seam on all the sides maybe they don't want us in here oh good but before i do this let me show you the rest of the kit that came with this i'll just uh, grab that now so it came with a 12 volt drill with a little battery level indicator on the side uh, a couple of batteries and a charger nice black case for a super duper contrast uh, and then the usual stuff it came with a little uh, belt clip for the drill a set of drill bits, uh, not drill bits, the drill bits are down here, a set of screwdriver bits with the adapter for it and uh, uh, also adapter to a quarter inch uh, nut spinner socket drive. And you've also got another one of those here and here you've got the bit uh, driver plus some more bits, some wood drills with a sharp point, presumably some general purpose, maybe metal or just wood again drills. A flexible adapter and uh, sockets in the size of 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13. Uh, it's not bad, it's just a generic kit. It's that a lot of them come with the same sort of stuff all packaged in a nice little case with the label just, just starting to peel off because it didn't really stick properly, but that's okay. Let me just grab the battery back out. That's the bit we want. I'll clip this shut before it just pops open and everything just spills out everywhere. Right, let's start uh, voiding warranties, shall we? So let's get the spudger in here and stick it under the label here. And I'll just rip the label off because I'm not really bothered in keeping the label. Oh, partly ripped off. I could have heated it up with the hot air gun. That's quite useful if you want to remove labels intact. Just heating them will do that. Tear invalid. Dare invalid, really. What a strange wording for it. But then again, they speak English better than I speak Chinese. Oh, the reason that's over there is because there's the bat other battery level indicator. That's why they put that sticker on. Okay. Put that out the way. And we shall take the screws out. I shall grab this little screwdriver for this. Will it have cell protection? I think it will have cell protection. Let's zoom down a little bit, get close to this. The other ones have had cell protection, but that is never a guarantee. I have seen other packs that have no uh, balancing or, well, they don't generate a balancing, just battery management system. However, uh, some just don't have any anything like that. They've literally got the cells in series. And uh, if one goes out of balance, then it will go overcharged or undercharged. Okay. This sticker here is is the stumbling point. The spring has popped out. What do we have? Oh, it's got a thermistor. It's got the batteries. It's also, apparently, it's not just the 12 volt, it's the 16 volt battery pack as well that can take the extra cell. Maybe useful if you were into such things, if you need that. Uh, so we've got the battery connection point. They've got a track going over there, I think, but they've also beefed it up with this. Um, Right, tell you what, I shall explore this. I shall reverse engineer it, uh, and then we can analyse the circuitry and see what secrets it holds. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. It's quite interesting. This red link bears a connection with this little splash of soda across here and these two empty component positions, because this is a universal voltage battery pack. It can either do... Uh, three cells for 12 volts or four cells for presumably they'd mark that as 16 volt. Other things worth mentioning about this are the battery connector block here. It's got the little jack socket in here, but it does have the provision for a third contact in the middle down here and another set of contacts here that you can plug it into a charger of their choice. 
No fancy data connections. The Chinese batteries do not have DRM, like the prominent tool manufacturer's batteries. Let's zoom in this. And explore the circuit board. Let's zoom out just a tiny bit, because that is just clipping the edges just a little bit. There we go, that'll do. So we have the charge control MOSFET. It's a little 8-pin package, um, plus a diode going to the positive. We have the chip that controls that. Now, this unit can take two chips. It can take a 3-cell chip or a 4-cell chip, and that's why that little blob of solder's there, and uh, why this link is across here. And we've got the discharge MOSFETs here, and this time they've used a current sense resistor, and they've used an NTC thermistor, a 10K thermistor, to actually monitor the temperature of the battery pack. What else? There's a diode here that is across the output of the connectors here, so that if a, a power tool, when you release the trigger, if there's an inductive spike or arcing, it will actually protect these MOSFETs from high voltage spikes. And like a previous 18 volt pack I looked at, they've used the chip slightly off label ish, but in a good way. They've actually added extra filtering with resistors and capacitors to uh, provide stable input. But if I was being cynical, I would say that's because the 1,500 milliamp hour cells in this 2,000 milliamp hour marked pack may be sort of fairly high impedance, and that's just to allow for pulling the trigger on the tool would cause a current spike and the voltage would drop. And that's just to um, basically filter that out and avoid it cutting out too early. Anything else worth mentioning here? So this link here, the chip's negative is referenced to the negative end of the battery pack. The positive end is used to power the chip, and that's why they've actually got this wire link here bridging, because normally with a four-cell pack, this is the connection here, and that would literally just be another tap. What they've done here is they've linked, bypassed the last cell, and uh, then they've shuffled things a bit here. They've removed components so that ultimately this uh, cell also provides power to the chip again, but they've actually just bridged between a non-contact and, uh, and an input. I shall show you that on the schematic. And it was quite easy to do the schematic because uh, this is the uh, manufacturer's official data for this. That should do it. So things where they've known, they've used the standard arrangement as shown here, 30K, 18K and a 10K thermistor. They've got that 0 0.003 ohm uh, sense resistor here and that measures the um, current presumably. But also they've got, they can measure the voltage across the MOSFETs for a, a mega dead short circuit. And it's interesting, they've nudged that up with a suspicious diode just to nudge that threshold up by 0.6 volts, which is quite a lot across a MOSFET. There's the charge MOSFET with a 1 mega ohm resistor they've added in series and then the 3 mega ohm pull down resistor. And then they've got a little short key diode just going to the uh, cells themselves. This is the partner chip too. The similar four cell chip, and that uses uh, pin three and four as separate taps on these uh, on the battery pack. Um, but because they're using the main positive also for powering the chip via filtering again, they've basically bypassed this. Uh, with a link and then just bridged because they got filtering they've bridged over here with a link as well so um in the case of the chip they've used it says no connection here i wonder if there actually is no connection inside who knows i would hope they've left the bond off here's another that says no connection once again they've connected to the zero volt rail but there's the extra filtering they've added normally the chip data sheet just shows lines directly but i think it's better they add this because a it adds the filtering but also it provides protection against little instance if the chip goes up in smoke and shorts all the batteries out. Although I think the bond wires would blow like fuses if that happened. They've also added uh, on the sense here, it's normally a directly sense, but they've added a one key and a filtering capacitor again. Um, the MOSFETs, they've added a one key resistor to the gate of the MOSFET. Everything is super protected. And there's that little link. Um, that is more or less it. I measured some of the capacitors in circuit. They came out roughly 100 nanofarad-ish. I've not drawn one of the capacitors in. But um, that one came closer to about 1 microfarad. But that was measuring in circuit, so it's very hard to tell if that exactly was it. 
So the pack is currently on charge. It says 1,500 milliamp hour on the side of the cells, which is very common for these Chinese battery packs. But uh, we'll find out when the test is complete what that is. Uh, it's going to take a while because it's going through charge and discharge cycle in the tester. So that will uh, be something I'll add into the description down below. But on that, you know, it's a logical design with some clever little tricks. A bit odd that they've put the splash of soda between the pins as a link option. They could have actually added a couple of pads for that, but it probably saves space. And other than that, uh, it's an interesting design. And as with uh, all the Chinese battery packs, it's, it's quite versatile. It's useful. Uh, because it doesn't have fancy charge circuitry. In fact, uh, it's got the output protection circuitry, it's got the input charge circuitry, comes with a little charger. If you so wanted, you could uh, actually just use this as a convenient source of a 12 volt battery pack for powering other projects. Oh, there is another little thing here. You see these two pads here? These are presumably for the little voltage monitor that is removed, the one that's uh, got the provision for it on here in the plastic, but uh, it's a little push button and the LEDs. It looks very much like the little type units, and uh, it's just basic when you push the button, it'll light a number of LEDs, but they've got that on the drill itself, which kind of makes sense. Uh, but that's it. Interesting little unit. It does have uses as a sort of personal 12 volt power supply, and I'll update you in the description on the actual capacity of the cells. I think they should probably be 1,500 milliamp hour, but time will tell. We'll soon find out.